Uh, wonderful. We're here today to talk a little bit about improvisation and particularly uh, riff-based improvisation. Um, these students are absolutely phenomenal, so I can't wait to have the opportunity to work with them. We're going to move over to a B-flat blues really quick, and we're just going to talk about a couple of methods you guys can use, and it can serve as a clinic for all the educators on there about how to get your students started working through improvisation. A lot of times, people tend to make a couple of common mistakes. One of those common mistakes is, oh yeah, just, you know, here's this quick scale, and just, just take it and just, you know, make it whatever you want, and that's jazz. Okay. Look, I'm not going to disparage anybody at this moment. I just want to say that's not necessarily the approach that we're going to take today. Really, we have to understand that this music is a language, first and foremost. This music is a language that has a tradition. And that tradition is important. And it's important for the tradition to evolve. There's no way that we can approach any language by simply making things up. It's certainly a part of it to have your own stamp. But if we don't understand how to speak the language, we can't really be innovative. One of the examples that I like to use is if we picture for a second, what if you went to a different country with a different language that you didn't know how to speak, and someone taught you about three words in that language and said, you know, just make the rest up. Just go in and just, you know, as long as you kind of sound like you're speaking that language, we'd be in a lot of trouble, right? That'd be a big problem. So it's the same thing with music. We don't want to just assume that we understand the style and the nuance. So what we're working with today is, I want you to keep in mind, uh, Professor Keith Hall in his, his workshop, I made a very good point where he said that our primary source of understanding the music is going to come from the tradition, is going to come from the recordings, and it's also going to come from mentorship. All the tools and books and things that we have are absolutely great secondary resources, but first and foremost, it's going to come from understanding the elders of this music and what they've laid before us. So today, I get the honor of serving as that elder of this music, which I can't believe I'm saying. Uh, but we are, I am serving in that capacity, and I want to teach the students some vocabulary and get them kind of moving into the blues form in a very particular way. So, rhythm section, we're going here on B flat blues. I want you guys to give me 1111, You got it down. Let's just hear the rhythm section and lay that foundation down. I want two, a B flat. Here we go. So if my alto is a very it's going to be G, trumpets is going to be C, and violins is going to be B flat. I want to hear you just establish one, three, five, six. Can we play that? One, two, quarter notes. Wow, yeah, when I looked at Tennessee, I was like, I want to go in that flat set. We're not going to go there. I promise you we'll get there. So what we're going to do is, is this for now. I'm going to have to do some one-handed playing. We're just going to play like this. That is a full band. One, two, you guys can swing. One, two, and again. Fantastic. Okay, good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give that a little bit of action and some momentum. We're going to use our theory skills. And we're going to turn that fourth chord into a dominant chord, and it's going to become the five or four. Now, please don't go into a jam session and say, are you guys going to play the five or four in the fourth bar? This is just for our brains, right? We're just activating the theory, and let's go ahead and play B flat seven in that fourth bar. I want you to notice how your ears are now compelled to pull you to the four chord. Can we all play that really quick? Notice the difference when we switch to B flat seven in that fourth bar. You guys good? One, two, one, two, B flat six. Back to B flat six, B flat six. We all comfortable with B flat seven? I'm sure you got it. 
All right, we're on the fifth bar now. E flat seven, E flat seven, B flat six, B flat six. One, two, ready, yeah. <laughs> Let's play that turn You guys ready? F7, E flat 7, E flat 6. One, two, ready, and. So, here's what we're going to do is we're working through, and we're going to work through a couple of different patterns so we can just get comfortable outlining that form and then learn some vocabulary that also outlines these chords in the same way. Does that make sense? Good. By the way, I know it's awkward when I'm back is facing you all, but I'm just trying to address the people. You guys good? You guys good? That wasn't very reassuring. You guys good out there? Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm just making sure. All right, you guys, let's try this. I'm going to try playing the chord a different, couple different ways. Once you learn it one way, I want you to go ahead and apply that to every single chord. You guys are pretty bright. Here's the first one. I'm going to bring that chord coming down. We all try playing that by ear. That's that B flat six chord. I'll play it one more time. It's all trying to just bang. One, two, ready, and. No problem, you guys can sing. Do we? Sing it. Do we? What does that sound like? <laughs> right, that's the flat, that's a flat third in the three. So I got. Sip it, holy dog. Sing that. Sip it, holy dog. We all play that now? You guys can hear it now, right? One. Two, ready, yeah. Listen. Let's be the flat third to the three to the one. Can we sing it? Flat third, three, one. Can we play that? Ready? Two, uh, ready, and. Alright, we feel 
feel confident we can nail the entire form now? Let's go through the entire form one more time. Uh, uh, two, uh, uh, two, ready, and. So you got to the fourth bar. What did that do for you? Anybody? Yeah, go ahead. It added a sort of resolution, kind of felt good once you hit it. Absolutely. It added a resolution. By the time you hit that fourth chord, it's like, oh, it's really time to go to the fourth chord. <laughs> one of the ways I think of it like this, I mean, this is one of the ways that I tend to explain using the dominant chord in the fourth bar, and this works for any secondary dominant that we'll use. We call it secondary dominant in classical music. It can work for jazz too. It's okay. If we think about it like this, everybody say, everybody just pretend like you're driving the car really quick. <laughs> Everybody say, I'm on road one. I'm on road one. And I'm cruising along. And I'm cruising along. I want you to do something illegal. I want everybody to make a right turn onto the forecourt. One, two, ready, and. <laughs> okay, right. So that's what happens if we just play B flat six, B flat six, B flat six, B flat six, and then we head over to B flat seven, right? Now, what are we going to do when we play that B flat seven? We're going to use our Turn signal. Can we all try that? <laughs> one, two, oh, let's sing it. Two, ready, and one. Oh, yeah. One. Oh, yeah. One. Oh, yeah. Turn signal. Oh, yeah. And four. Do we feel what happened now? Do we feel that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So I'm going to give you guys another example of how we can work with that. And let's go ahead and work with that. Let's try another riff. And I think when you guys hear this riff one time, I'm gonna play one time through the form. This time, there's only one added note, and you guys will be able to hear it. I'm gonna play with the rhythm section. Tell me if you guys can hear it. Let's check it out. One, two, three. 
more time, we'll go down to the octave. One, two, three. Woo, back to the one chord. Shaho ba be, shaho ba be. One, two, three. Let's go da ho be. Da 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 da. Da ho ba ho be. One, two, three. One time the five chord. Shaho ba ho be. Two, three. Let's go back to the four chord. One, two, three. Ready? And. Keep it the whole form, let's go. You guys got it. One, a uh, two, uh -huh. two, ready, and. Listening. Okay, that's good. That's good. So we're going to listen to the news. We're going to listen to the podcast. We're going to listen to specifically. Somebody? Anybody? Okay, cool. Let's get more specific. Everybody should have at least one idol on their instrument that they look up to. And it's going to be different for every musician. I want you to have one person like, man, when I heard that person play the news on my instrument, to me, that's how I want to sound at this particular stage. I have several. Louis Armstrong, Miles Davis. Clifford Brown, uh, Lee Morgan, Tom Brown, Roy Hargrove, Terrence Blanchard, Nicholas Beck. I knew Jerome was going to say that. I did that just for Jerome, but okay. Good. The idea though is now we want to get more specific. Because I can say, go listen to jazz and just go to Spotify, jazz, and then just listen to whatever comes up. But we have to be strategic about our development. And one of the ways we can be strategic about our development is learning songs that will help inform us of how we can get around the core changes. I want to show you guys how now we can take a melody and we can flip that melody and make that melody work for us for this concept. Does everybody know the song Blue Monk by Colombian's Monk? And if you don't, guess what? Let's talk a little bit. Everybody just say, everybody say, third to the fifth, one, two, sing, in. Third to the fifth. Can everybody start on the third and go chromatically up to the fifth, two, ready, and. Yeah. We just want to use this as a vehicle to understand how we can play over the form. So let's go on the one chord. We're going to play third to the fifth. We're going to go to the four chord. We're going to switch to the four chord, the second bar. We're crazy, right? Then we're going to play third to the fifth. We're going to go back to the one chord and play third to the fifth. And then we're going to go fifth to the seventh. So everybody say third to the fifth. Third to the fifth. Everybody say four chord, third to the fifth. Four Back to the one chord, third to the fifth. Back to the one chord, third to the fifth. Okay, now we're on one dominant, fifth to the seventh. Now what we're doing is we're taking the vocabulary of the music and we're starting to experiment and trying to find ways to be convincing. Listen.
So now all we're doing is taking that form and something very similar to playing from the third to the fifth, and in some cases a little bit more. Let's stick to the third to the fifth right now. Everybody play B flat six, and we're gonna go chromatically from the third to the fifth. One, two, ready, and. Fantastic, everybody go to E flat. We're gonna play from that concert G to that concert B flat, okay? One, two, ready, and. Let's go back and simplify on the one chord, third to the fifth again, third to the fifth again. One, two, B flat. Again. Fantastic. Now we're on the four chord. Let's play from the third to the fifth, third to the fifth. One, two, four, chord. Again. Back to the one. Very good. All right, now let's go to the five chord. Let's go to that concert F. I'm sorry, you guys want to just try it. Let me stop. Five, four, one. One, two, five, chord. Okay, 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 okay. Never mind. All right, I got ahead of myself. We're on the five chord. We're on F7. Let's start on the third. We're going to say third to the fifth. So concert A to C. B flat instruments. We're going to go from B to D. E flat instruments. We're going to go from F sharp to A. Everybody else is going to go from D to. Sorry, everybody's going to go from A to C. You guys ready? One, two, ready, and. Can we go to the four chord now? One, two, ready, and. Can we bring it back to the one, two, ready, and. Now I have faith in you guys to play all the way through the form, and we're going to change up the rhythm every second bar that we did before. Listen. Six, five, one. We all sing that? Seven, six, five, 
Let's put that over B flat seven and try that out. One, two, play that. Fantastic. Can you play this with them? I want to write it again. Okay, I want you guys to think for a second. Use your ears. And guys, it's going to get messy for a second. I apologize. Without me guiding you through it, everybody on their own, figure that out with the four chord and the five chord. Go for it. Just practice real quick. Go ahead. Thank you guys very much. Yeah. 